Hey everybody, this is Matt Racine, and this is episode 9 of the Bar Exam Mind podcast. It's uh, just a few days before the bar exam, and I was reminded that after the July 2012 bar exam, I sent out a tweet asking something like, Hey, do you guys have any ideas for uh, how to make my website better, how to make my podcast better, that sort of thing? And somebody wrote back and said, Hey, I was hoping that you would have given us some sort of pep talk shortly before the bar exam. And so I remembered that and said, okay. So this, for what it's worth, is uh, my pep talk. I'm not the peppiest person in the world, so maybe it's more of just some things to think about uh, as we approach the bar exam. First thing is just keep up the good work. I'm sure you've been studying really hard, practicing a lot, and uh, I'm sure you're starting to see all the dividends from that. So uh, just keep doing it. Um, if you have any weak areas, maybe focus on those a little bit more. A few extra practice questions. Go through the flashcards a few extra times on those weak areas. Um, and then the areas you're strong on. Uh, I know what I used to do is just say, all right, I've got whatever. I've got all the negligence stuff down. So instead of, um, you know, doing any hardcore preparation on negligence, I would just pick up that portion of my torts outline and just kind of glance through it and kind of remind myself, oh yeah, these are the elements and oh yeah, these are, you know, the, the standards of care for different uh, types of people and I just spend a few moments on it and then on anything that I was still kind of weak on. Um, I would go through and do more intense practice and memorization. So for on the California bar exam, I just had a real hard time with community property. So that was something I spent a little bit more time on in the days leading up to the bar exam. Another thing is just to remember to rest and relax. You know, you need to make sure you're getting a decent amount of sleep so that your brain has a chance to solidify everything that you're shoving into it. You know, um, you want to make sure that it doesn't just turn into goo. You want to make those connections in there. You want to have the memories. You want to have the time for the practice that you're doing to work its magic and make make those connections between the different topic areas and the different fact patterns that you can, so that you can start recognizing when certain situations give rise to certain responses. The bar exam is obviously not a, a robotic sort of process, but there are a lot of situations where you can, through your practicing, come to understand that certain types of situations, in fact patterns for essays or in fact patterns for MBE questions, will tend to give rise to a particular response that the bar examiners are looking for. And I'm sure you've been seeing that already uh, in all your practicing. In addition to making sure you're getting enough uh, sleep and taking breaks, um, if you're having any sort of uh, anxiety about the bar exam, uh, make sure you do something to address that couple of suggestions are uh, one if you have never been to the place where the bar exam is going to be administered and you live near there you know short drive maybe drive over there and walk around F face the face the unknown so you can say oh all right now I know what the building looks like I know where the entrance is it's just one less thing I have to stress about um, if you don't live anywhere near it try using Google Street View and see if you can get a picture of the venue that way. Also, try to visualize, you know, walking into the bar exam testing room and staying calm. I actually have a video, to, or not a video, an audio to help you do this. Um, it's based on a visualization script that's in my book, and I'll have a link to it in the show notes. It's part of an audio program I put together, but I give that away free so that people can decide if they want to get the rest of the program 
but I think it's probably the, one of the most important visualizations out there, especially for people who might have had some test anxiety when they were in law school or have anxiety about being in places they've never been before. I know that was that's uh, something that can affect me, so I feel for you if that's uh, something that affects you. So you can go ahead and check out that uh, visualization. And uh, finally, don't underestimate luck or fortune, uh, however you want to, however you want to call that circumstance. I have a couple of stories for you. Um, I had uh, when I worked as a lawyer in Oregon, one of the partners at the law firm was talking to me about her bar exam experience, and she uh, she said that she had been studying and doing everything, and about two days before the bar exam, she realized that she hadn't really bothered to study trusts and wills, and she had a total freak out about it, and grabbed an outline and read it a couple times and just said, oh my god, I'll, I'll never understand this, and she just said, you know what, screw it, if there's a wills and trusts essay on the bar exam, I'll just make something up and hope that all my other stuff is good enough to pass. Well, bar exam came and went, and there was no wills and trust question. So it was actually a good choice for her not to waste, you know, a whole day trying to learn that and probably learning it poorly. Now, I'm not advocating skipping subjects, but it worked out for her. And another story is when I was taking the Oregon bar exam, uh, the way it was set up was on the essay day. You would do six half-hour essays in the morning, and then you'd have a lunch break, and then you'd do three half-hour essays and a 90-minute performance test in the afternoon. So we had the um, six essays in the morning, and we were taking a lunch break, and this guy comes up to me and a friend of mine, and he says, Hey, do either of you guys have a secured transactions outline I could look at? And... We said, what do you mean? He said, well, I never studied for it, and I'm just, you know, worried that it might pop up in the afternoon, and so I just want to look at it real quick. And he said, um, yeah, sure, you know, here, because we weren't studying, you know. Um, if you've listened to my podcast, you probably know I don't advocate studying on the day of the bar exam. Um, but so we gave the guy the outline, and he sat there, you know, eating his sandwich or whatever it was, and... uh reading through a 10-page secured transactions outline. Anyway, in the afternoon, um, sure enough, there was a secured transactions question. And so at the, at the break, after all the essays, we walked up to the guy and said, oh my God, you know, how'd you, how do you think you did? He said, I aced that question. He's like, it was right in my mind. I saw, when I saw there was a secured transactions essay, I did that one first before I forgot anything. And he's like, it was probably the best essay I wrote all day. So, the guy just was super lucky. Um, so, like I said, don't underestimate the power of luck or fortune. Although, of course, fortune tends to favor the prepared, so uh, don't just uh, skip a topic and hope that you'll that it won't be on the bar exam. So that's it for podcast number nine in this series of randomly timed randomly released podcasts. Good luck on the test uh, coming up. Uh, if you're listening to this when I release it, that means the February 2013 bar exam. If you're listening to it sometime after that, good luck on whatever bar exam you're taking. And if you have any questions or concerns, any topics you'd like me to cover on future podcasts, please contact me via my contact page at baraexammind.com slash contact. Thanks for listening.